Almost every electronic gadget you touch these days has a little itty bitty computer chip in it. Telephones, digital cameras, Bluetooth earphones, game controllers, thermostats in your house, coffee pots, your computer mouse, even your family car has dozens of these little computers controlling the anti-lock brakes, radio, windows, air conditioning, well you get the idea. These little computers, which we call embedded processors, because they're embedded in the device, are everywhere. And in the next 10 minutes, you are going to learn how easy it is to program one. The one we're going to use is called an Arduino, and it's very popular because the software is free and the hardware is really inexpensive. The Arduino we're using here is available at Radio Shack for only 29 bucks. In this video, you'll program it to simply blink an LED on and off, then make it blink faster, and then control the blinking with a switch input. And given just those basic skills, you'll be ready to go create your own new electronic gadget. So let's get started. Your Arduino board should be connected and the yellow LED should be blinking one second on, one second off. This is being done by the blink program, or sketch as they're called in Arduino speak. We see in here that there's a setup section and a loop section. The Arduino will execute everything in this setup section once when the Arduino is turned on. Here we tell the Arduino that pin 13, which we defined right here, LED equals 13, should be an output. That's the pin number that the blinking LED is connected to on this board. If we needed to set up other pins, we could do that in here also. Everything in this loop section gets run over and over and over again as fast as the processor can go. In this program, or sketch, we turn on pin 13 by writing a high to pin 13. We wait one second, or a thousand milliseconds. Then we write a low to pin 13. Then we wait another thousand milliseconds. And that gets repeated over and over and over again, so we have an LED that turns on and off, on and off, just like that. Now, Merit Badge Requirement 5A says take an existing program and modify it. Well, let's modify this one to make the LED blink faster. Well, that's easy. We just make this wait between LED transitions shorter, right? Let's make it, uh, if that was 1,000 milliseconds, let's only wait 250. That should run four times as fast. We change it up there, and we change it again down here. Now the light will turn on, it'll wait only a quarter of a second, then it'll turn off. Wait a quarter of a second, turn back on, repeat. To download our new program which blinks the LED faster to the board, just hit this arrow right here. The program is downloaded to the board, and if it's successful you see a message like this, but more importantly, if you look down at the board, that yellow LED is blinking a lot faster now, isn't it? Now there's a note in the front of the Merit Badge book that defines what a program is for the purposes of this Merit Badge. That is, a program needs to have an input, make a decision based on that input, and then have some kind of output based on that decision. We could consider waiting for this time to be kind of an input, and we certainly have an output, the LED, but we don't have any decision making, do we? So let's add something. How about a switch that we can press to enable the blinking LED? When the switch is pressed, we want the LED to blink. When it's not pressed, we want the LED to be off. I'm using a couple parts from kits we got from Radio Shack, but you can use whatever you want. Here's how it's wired. The switch connects ground, or a logic low, over here to pin 7 on the Arduino. So step 1, in the setup section, we need to tell the Arduino that we want that pin 7 to be an input pin that's pulled up. That's because when we press the button, it'll connect the pin to ground or a low. Pause the video and type this line exactly as you see it. Down here in the loop section, we want to read that pin, and if it's low, we want the LED to blink. If it's high, we want the LED to be off. Well, that's easy. We put an if statement in here, and we say if, when we read the digital pin 7, that's equal to a low, then I want to do everything that's inside these brackets. Otherwise, do everything inside of these brackets. And let's see, if the, if the button's being pressed, which is a low, we're going to blink the LEDs over and over and over again. If the button is not pressed, then we just want the LED to be off. So I'm going to copy this guy, put him right here, and that says do a digital write to the LED pin and force him to be a low. 
And just to clean things up here a little bit, I'm going to put a couple tabs in. So now it's real obvious. If this condition is true, if the button is pressed, we're going to blink the LED. If it's not pressed, we're going to turn it off. Go ahead and pause the video and add the if statement, the two braces, the else, two more braces, and then copy this statement down to here. Make it look exactly like this with the semicolons. Pause the video, enter all this code, and resume when you're ready. Okay, well, if we did it right, we should be able to try it and see what happens. Let's hit the button to download the program to the Arduino. I didn't get any error messages. And if I look down at my board, I see the LED is not on right now. But if I reach over and push the button, sure enough, I get my fast blinking LED back. Let go of my button, the LED turns off. Exactly what we expected. Now we have a program that has an input, the switch in this example, we make a decision based on that switch using this if statement, and we have an output, the LED, which is either toggling or it's just off. Perfect. Now, let's try the opposite. Make the LED blink when the button is not pressed, but stop the blinking when the button is pressed. How would you do that? Well, it's the exact same thing, except now, if we read pin 7 where the switch is, and he's a high, then make the LEDs blink. Otherwise, turn him off. Go ahead and pause the video, make that change yourself, download the program, and see if after you do that the LED's blinking, but when you press the button, the LED turns off. Well, that's a good start on programming the Arduino Embedded Controller. Now understand, we just barely scratched the surface with this little example. There are tons of things you can do with these. Just look at all the examples that come with it. These are already done for you. you got basics, digital, you can read analog things in like temperatures, communication, sensors, all kinds of stuff you can do. Plus, there are thousands of projects on YouTube and Google. Just do a search and you'll be amazed at all the fun things you can do now that you know how to program an embedded processor like the Arduino. And hopefully, now when you look at a toy with a blinking light or a switch on it, you'll be able to think, hey, I know how to do that.